Welcome into another edition of the Spare Time Bowling Show. Steve Sparky, Pfeiffer with you, 12.50 a.m. The Fed. You can check out the Potawatomi Sportsbook Pro Hoops postgame show served up by Wendy's after every Milwaukee Bucks game, uh, obviously throughout the season and the postseason. Phil Brylow is here. You can follow him on Twitter at Brew City Bowling. Dwight Albright is out. He lost his voice, so he won't be here today. Uh, but joining us instead, and maybe not in his place because she's probably much better off than, than Dwight is, uh, Lindsay Boomershine joins us. The PWBA uh, Tour Champion is with us, and she is on Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it. So I went and I looked. Man, you need a bigger Twitter following. What is going on? <laughs> that is, I mean, that's horrible. We got to get that up. Follow her, please. I'm begging you follow her on Twitter at Linz Boom. That's right. L I N D S boom. Let's get her Twitter following up uh, and going. That is your Twitter handle, right? It's not somebody impersonating you just to make no, sure. No, it, it, it really is. Um, my uh, focus usually is Facebook and Instagram. So that's kind of what I've been focusing on since Twitter switched over to X. Oh, um, I totally get it. Yes. yes I, that, so. that I, that part I understand for us in sports talk. <laughs> Uh, it's all about X more than anything else for whatever the reason, as far as response goes um, with sports talk listeners versus the other two, for whatever reason, it tends to be more about X than the other ones. And Facebook, I feel like is getting to be an old people thing. Am I, and, and I'm old, so I, I feel comfortable saying that. I feel like it's getting to be more of an older person thing. Like do kids in their twenties even have Facebook anymore? Um, yes, because like Gianna has Facebook when we did the PBA junior show, um, I mean, I, I would think that they started with Instagram first and then they like evolved over into Facebook. Sure. Um, I have like my personal Facebook page and then my fan page connected to my personal page on Facebook. And that's why I like it a little bit more because sure. I do reels and posts. But please, everyone out there, help me with my my uh, ex. I guess yeah. it's not tweets anymore. We still know. call it Twitter. You see uh, on the yeah. video, it's still, we still have the bird on there. Like I'm not changing it. I don't, I don't <laughs> care what they say. I'm not changing it, Lindsay. It's not going to happen. Uh, okay. So thanks again for coming on. I I, I guess I'll start off. I want to go back to all-star week and you and I were talking about it uh, a little bit uh, before we started, as far as the experience, you know, bowling with NASCAR drivers uh, and how that whole thing played out and really how ready they really were for this whole thing. I mean, I was really excited about the event. Um, Hank and I used to go down to the NASCAR race for seven or eight years um, in Las Vegas. And that's when I really became like a true, true fan. Um, we stopped going a couple years ago when his friend unfortunately passed away. Oh. But so when they asked me to do the Go Bowling show with all these NASCAR drivers, I was super stoked. Um, so, you know, we get there for the show. Um, I previously Googled AJ Allmendinger, so I knew like kind of what car he drove, who his sponsors were, how old he was, you know, kind of some background information. Um, and they all got there in the morning and they had no personal drilled bowling balls. They had no shoes. They had nothing. Oh my God. And so uh, Lee Up, which is the regional sales manager um, for Storm, he brought all of his matchmaker balls. So Hank, my husband, and Lee were fitting up all the NASCAR drivers with the matchmaker balls and like <laughs> switching in the fingers, switching in the thumbs, and getting like as close as possible, picking out a ball when they don't even know how they really throw it, except for Eric, because he was on the show with Kyle um, all right. previously. Yeah. Um, so it was interesting. So I kind of let that all happen. Like I didn't say anything. Like I didn't say hi. Like I just was like kind of getting my stuff ready. And then AJ came over and I'm, I was so lucky I got paired up with him because he's, he's hilarious. Yep. Um, and so <laughs> I was like, Oh, hi, I'm Lindsay. And he's like, Hey, how are you? And then, you know, he started talking. He was asking me about bowling and, and I was kind of joking with him. And I was like, Hey, like I did Google you by the way, because I just like, didn't want to have no idea. Like, you know, what you were all about. And he's like, oh, no, I did the same thing for you, Queen Champion. And I was like, <laughs> and I was like well, at least, I at least wanted to know what he looked like so that I knew right. like, right. who I was looking for. Um, so that was like basically within the first five minutes of meeting each other. And from that point on, it was a lot of fun. Um, we like just talked about NASCAR. We talked about bowling. Um, he said he used to bowl with his father when he was younger as a teenager. And so I'm assuming that he hasn't really bowled since that point. So for someone 20-ish years later to step up on TV 
with a ball that's not drilled for you with new shoes. I mean, I you know what he did was pretty impressive to they, to keep it. They up. should have they should have relayed that story on TV. Maybe they didn't know that story on TV, but that that story right there gives a lot of credit to those guys that showed up in NASCAR who didn't have any of their own stuff. Like that would have been a bigger wow moment for the fans. Like really not. They don't, none of these guys own any of this stuff. They're doing it all just on the fly. To me, that would have made them look even more impressive, especially AJ. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, and some of them didn't even ever bowl before. I don't think Daria's partner bowled more than twice in his entire life. Oh my God. So, and he was, um, he filled in for the partner. She was going to have because of travel. I guess he was stuck somewhere and he couldn't get there in time. So like in the morning, we're like all scrambling around, you know, and then we decided not to wear matching jerseys because her partner wasn't there. And so it was just kind of like, <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh. but it was great. I mean, once we started bowling, I mean, the first match, that right lane was extremely difficult because of the install, I guess, because of like the leveling of the barn. Right. And so I was striking in practice and then I'm like, oh no, like I, I can't do this when, you know, and he actually bowled really well that game, AJ did. Um, and then I knew I needed a mark and he's like, well, this before I bowled the 10th frame of the semifinal match. And he's like, what are you going to do? And I was like, I threw three strikes in the 10th. 10th for $60,000 in a major title. We got this. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's good stuff. I love that. Go ahead. Well, Phil. well, and you mentioned, you know, the family connection that AJ Allmendinger have. There's probably a lot of people out there that doesn't know how deep into bowling your family connection is, Lindsay. Uh, and it's not, you know, not like a, directly your dad or anything. Your uncle is a pretty big time name in the history of the PBA tour. Yeah, Tom Baker. I mean, he. Oh, Tom yeah. Baker only. Because, <laughs> well, before, I, I mean, me and Hank have been married 11 years this July. So, um, 12, actually. That's bad. The woman's. <laughs> can I, can I just stop you for a second? <laughs> Phil, yeah. every time, every time she says her husband's name, mm -hmm. Hank, I think of Hank the dog for the Brewers. Uh, all those years ago, Back you remember the day, Hank yeah. the dog? Yeah, I remember yeah. Hank the dog. Yeah. Lindsay, oh, do absolutely. you know who Hank the dog is? You have any I idea who? I think I've seen him because my son and Hank are huge baseball fans, but not for the Brewers. Yes. So, so. it was this like little white dog yeah. that like roamed into like sp their spring training facility that they essentially like adopted for a season as their mascot and groomed them up, cleaned them all up. And the dog was with them all year long. And then eventually, I don't know if one of the people in the organization like the took office, Hank yeah. home or whatever uh, with them. So Hank, the dog. So every time you say Hank, I keep thinking of that Brewers mascot dog. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Lindsay. Sorry, Hank Boomerstein. So, yeah, he, um, Tom Baker is my uncle. So since Hank and I have been married, people really don't know, like, what my na maiden name was. But, I mean, Tom has won, I think, 10 PBA titles. Um, and then he won the the one major to get him exempt um, when he wasn't exempt. Yep. And that was one of the best moments I've ever seen on TV. Um, and he's a wonderful person. He was a wonderful role model for me growing up. I grew up with him closely. Our family was very close and he really inspired me to love the game of bowling. And I used to, as a kid, go and watch him out on tour. And that's how I've known Pete and Norm and Walter and all those guys back from when I was about eight to 12 years old. Cause you know, I basically saw them anytime they were close to Buffalo, New York, cause that's where I grew up. So sure. no, and he, he was, he was amazing. And Tom's still winning. He just won yeah. a regional in the PBA South I, region a couple of weeks ago. I mean, Tom's in his seventies and he's still beating up on guys 20 years younger than him. It's, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, no, and I saw he won the regional when AJ and I won the All-Star yep. uh, TV show, and he called me, and I was catching a flight, and then I called him the next day, and then I shared his win on my fan page, and he was like, congratulations to you, too, um, love you, like, so proud of you. Yeah. So he's, you know, he was so ecstatic when I won Queens. It was, it was amazing to hear, like, what he had to say um, after all these years of him bowling and, you know, going – all over the world to bowl and spreading the love he had for the sport. And so I just hope that, you know, people see that. Um, Cause at the all-star show, I didn't have to be so serious. 
I mean, I took it seriously, but we were having more fun. And I don't think the audience really gets to see that when, you know, all of us ladies are on the professional women's bowling tour, because I mean, this is for titles. This yeah. is for, you know, our livelihood. So I like that the fact that we got to show a different side and demographic of us. And, Lindsay, uh, I got a question for you. Yeah. So when you were growing up and you were bowling, right, you're however old you were when you started bowling. Um, and, and you're working your way through, when did you decide that this is something you wanted to do, do as possibly like a career going forward? Well, I was pretty athletic as a kid. I did, I pitched softball and I ran track and I bowled. And I think I was about, I started bowling when I was five and I think I was about 12, um, in sixth grade in middle school. And, uh, they needed bowlers for I think we lost our mic yeah Lindsay. if you can hear us we lost your audio i don't think she can hear us though i don't think she can hear us either oh there we go yep that that's good but we lost her we lost her mic lost her right. you have her cell text her and let her know that we lost her mic oh she's gonna sign but i think she'll sign back in Okay. That will probably fix this up. It will Lindsay Boomer Shine, PWBA Tour Champion, uh, joins us here on the uh, Spare Time Bowling Show. All right, Lindsay, sorry. I think we lost you. Your camera went black, and then we lost your audio, too. Do you have us back? Yes. Can you hear me? I'm yep, so sorry. You're all good. Continue on. Sorry. Okay. Um. So, anyway, uh, so I started bowling when I was five. And then um, when I was 12, my dad told me, hey, you really need to decide what you want to do. And I started bowling for the Sweet Home High School uh, bowling team because they needed bowlers when I entered into seventh grade. And I made the high school bowling team. Wow. Um, at 13 years old. And then we went to, um, you know, sectionals because New York was a huge state for bowling. And I shot 300 <laughs> during the singles of sectionals. And at that point, I really realized with the talent that has grown up in New York, like, I grew up watching the goat, Liz Johnson, like yep. for my whole childhood. And now has become one of my very good friends. So the area itself was incredible for bowling. Um, so then at that point, I kind of decided, okay, I'm going to take this more seriously. And I stopped playing softball and I stopped running track and I started working out more. And then um, Coach Straub recruited me. Um, you know, and I started bowling junior gold and really it's history from there. And I had always wanted to become a professional bowler and I was always in love with it. I just became super serious about it. Once my dad said, Hey, you need to choose, you know, what you're going to do. But my physical talent was noticeable. Like, you know, when you watch those people bowl for the first time, even when they're younger, like they have something that's noticeable. And so that was kind of, uh, you know, what kind of transpired. And then people started to wanting to help me and my bowling game basically evolved. And especially because of my uncle, because they would see me bowl and they're like, oh, hey, you know, let's give her a couple tips. Like she could be really, really good. Like when she gets older. So that's kind of how it all started. But deep down inside, I feel like I always was meant to do this. Do you remember when I, you were probably in college when it happened and you said you want to be a professional bowler. And then in 2003, the announcement comes out that the PWBA is no more. Did that kind of change your direction on what you wanted to do after college, knowing that that professional route probably wasn't going to come back that quick? I mean, at that time, I was hoping that the relaunch would have happened much sooner. Um, but in 2003, when it basically folded, um, I, I, I didn't go to, like, I graduated a few years after that. And then they had the PBA women's series that they came out with. And so I kind of got done with college and bounced like right into that, which I think was in 2009 mm -hmm. or 2008, 2009. Mm -hmm. yep. And that's when I graduated college. So like basically the PWBA tour folded in 03. I went to college in 04 and graduated in, in 08. And then I kind of went right into that PBA, you know, women's series. And then we still had Queens and the U.S. Open. And then that's how I qualified for the PBA women's series. Um, after that, 
was a little bit harder because it didn't seem like the tour was going to come back anytime soon or we had heard anything about it. So that was kind of uh, disheartening for me. Um, but then I started working uh, for H5G about 11 years ago. And uh, I always wanted to stay in the bowling industry. And then the PWBA tour relaunched in 2015 um, when my uh, BFF won the first title, uh, PWBA title in uh, Steve Cook's Fireside Lanes. And really, I mean, you know, we've we've been having a great time since the relaunch. We really have. So questionable at times, but bowling has always been there for me. And I feel like it's always had my back at that point. What does it look like uh, from a female perspective as far as people chasing that same dream that you chased? I, I remember years ago, it was EJ Tackett's first year, first time on TV, whatever the case may be. I think we were at a World Series of Bowling out in Vegas when they used to record him. Um, and I, I talked to him, and he, he was telling me there were bowlers better than him uh, that weren't doing the PBA tour because they didn't think they could make enough money and they wanted to make more money. So they, you know, be a doctor, a lawyer, whatever the case may be and gave up on that dream. What does that look like from your perspective, from the women's perspective, as far as the high school women bowlers, then transitioning over, over to college. I think one of them, right. is going to Nebraska. I think I heard of has a full ride to Nebraska. Uh, how, how does that look right now? The future of bowling on that side. I think the future of bowling, especially for women and ladies is, Phenomenal. I mean, the talent that I see out there, like Kayla Starr, Gianna, just to name a few, um, you know, Jillian Martin's at University of Nebraska right now. Um, and I mean, I would have loved to finish college and gone right into the PWBA tour. Um, unfortunately, that wasn't an option for me, but I feel like that will be an option for many years to come for these ladies. I really do. And I think that two handed ladies are starting to come up and starting to really fall in love with the two-handed bowling. And I think that's great, too, because it brings a different demographic to the sport. So uh, if you can get an ed a full education for free, kind of like I did at the University of Nebraska, and then be able to go right on the professional field, um, I think that they'll have a lot more opportunities, per se, than, than we did, just because of the transition between the PWBA Tour not being going on during those years um but you have to work hard these ladies are they're good um and i you know every year i always look at the roster of all the new the new rookies and what those talents look like um i work really really hard on my game and i show up prepared because if you don't show up prepared you don't know your ball reactions you don't know how to play those patterns there's just no way that you're going to be able to succeed out there on that tour. And, and that goes the same for the men. I mean, look how hard EJ's worked from his first show to now. I mean, for sure, it's absolutely incredible. So it's really what you want to put into it. I, I always try to put as much as possible into it as I possibly can. Yeah. I mean, and we're five weeks out from the first PWBA stop at 2024. I mean, obviously, you're looking forward to getting a green bay, getting a chance to defend that Queens title. You're automatically seated into the 64-player bracket, so that's a nice little bit of relax. But is there one stop in particular on the tour this year that you're really looking forward to getting back to? I We've been to mostly all of them, um, except for, I think, southern Indiana. Um, that was a new stop this year. Um, obviously, I've been to Detroit. Uh, we've been to Woodland Bowl in Indianapolis. Um, I love... Um, Egan, Minnesota. Um, Brent, he's an amazing host. Um, I love Cherry Bowl. I'm excited to come back to Green Bay. I made the players show there, um, I think, the year after I had my son. So I think like 2017 through yeah. 2018. Yeah. I love a Schwabenon. It took me like three years to finally pronounce it correctly. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, And so I'm excited to come back there. I like that bowling center. But I think the biggest thing for me was last year, I did not put extra pressure on myself. And so um, I'm, I'm just excited that we get, that we have all these stops. We have this schedule and we get to showcase women's bowling at the highest, you know, professional level. So I'm really lucky in that regard. So I wouldn't say one over the other, each one has like a special place. I'm excited to go to the new center to see what Southern Indiana is all about. Um, Hank's, Parents are from 
Kentucky, which is close to that area, and now they live in Dayton. So um, I, I know a couple of them are going to come over and watch us bowl for that weekend. So I, I just, you know, one day at a time, one shot at a time, one game. And I, I'm just looking to enjoy myself and have fun, really. I'm, cu- I'm curious about something. Um, mm-hmm. So the PBA Tour, that's Tom Clark, obviously. Uh, and, you know, they do their deals with Fox or whatever they, whoever they do their deals with. So who essentially is the one negotiating for you all for the PWBA as far as possible TV deals or streaming deals or whatever the case may be? Who is the one doing that in charge of that part of it? That would be the USBC. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm, I, I was really hoping that wasn't the answer, but I figured I'd ask anyhow. Uh, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't have anything to say. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're good. You don't have to say anything. I just, yeah, that explains a lot. Because Dwight, who's not here, had given us questions to ask you that he wanted to ask, but since he couldn't be here, and yeah. we've gotten through a couple of them already, but another one was, um, does she ever think the ladies will get a tour TV spot on Fox uh, like the guys have? That's why I was kind of curious to see, you know, who was the one actually negotiating this on, on your behalf. Yes, so uh, the USBC slash BPAA uh, is basically our funding for everything. So, um, I mean, we're very fortunate that they want to put all that money into the TV shows that we have, which all the majors are live on CBS Sports Network. Um, I don't know anything really past that. Um, I joined our, well, ran to be a part of the PWBA committee so we could try to make the PWBA better, but that's not something that we discuss. Um, But I know how much the USBC and the BPAA give us to be able to live out our dreams and win professional women's bowling association titles. So that's kind of where, where we're all at. That's really all that I know. So when you go into a city you know, Southern Indiana or wherever you end up in Green Bay, how much legwork is done on your behalf as far as getting TV cameras down there and doing that type of stuff to set up interviews and promote the event when you're there locally, getting you on radio shows or whatever? I mean, basically, like, there's certain people that are asked, I, I would say, every week. Um, sometimes in the middle of the season, it's usually the champion that won the week before or you know, maybe whoever's top five in points, and then they'll have either radio broadcasts that they'll ask us if we could join into, or they're usually like, um, depending on when the PTQ is, because I know that the tournaments this year, uh, especially the first two, Minnesota and Rockford are sold out. And so now the PTQ, when I looked at the roster yesterday, is pretty substantial. So for women's bowling, that's huge. Um, yep. that we're, that we're selling out this fast. Um, I know they're popular places to bowl, but, um, it really depends where the event is being held, but usually there's always a news station there, or they're asking us to do interviews. Um, we have great social media people at every event that do everything for the PWBA and we do interviews with them and then they post it. So we don't have to, and then we'll like repost it. So there's a lot of like back, you know, behind the scenes stuff that's going on at those events before practice actually starts that involves us and asking us to do it. And they really try to get a wide range of the women that are being successful out on the tour doing all this. So you don't see the same person every time. That's good. Very good. Yes. So that does happen. Like Cleveland, I did an interview for the news channel during practice. So that yeah. was just one that happened last year. Um, so there's a lot of stuff um, that goes on that I don't think people see. And, you know, what I love to see is when I go to an event and people are excited to watch women bowl. That's what, you know, that's what thrives me um, to be better and to be able to perform on that high level and have them be excited about watching bowling. Because I feel like that happens with the men. I mean, I watch bowl tv i i've been watching the masters all week this week like i love to watch bowling so um when other people are as excited to watch the sport it you know it really really propels me to be the best i possibly can you know there's a couple of uh, tournaments on the pwba schedule this year that are kind of unique with the with the lucy the strike against breast cancer mixed doubles now we have the trios event in jonesboro Mm -hmm. has there ever been any chatter just to have a doubles i mean i've never seen a doubles event for the ladies like the roth holman for the men 
I've never seen a trios or, or any type of team event that's been planned for the PWB. And I think that could bring a few more eyes on because obviously if that can eventually get the CBS Sports Network, that's just more faces that people will get to see on TV. Has there been any chatter about different you, you know formats with doubles or trios or something just for the ladies on the PWBA tour? I think it would be spectacular for an event. Yes, we um, are working towards getting the doubles event back. Um, I know that they're working on it, uh, and I did bring it up as a suggestion. I think what you said is exactly what I said, that it would bring a different demographic. Um, you know, I think it would be fun to choose who you wanted to bowl with, like you do at the Lucy. I mean, obviously, I'd choose Alicia Current because we bowled together for so many years. But, you know, to me, that would be a lot of fun and to win a title with the partner you choose and or your best friend, I think would, would really just showcase a different side of us as well. Right. Cause like all stars, more fun doubles is a little bit like it's serious, but you're with someone that yeah. you trust. Cause that's who you'd pick as your doubles partner. I'm really excited for the trios um, that the PBA came up with. Like, I was like, if I had, like, if my uncle could bowl and we could all qualify together with yes. like, one of my yeah. favorite bowlers, like, that would be awesome. <laughs> right. I was kind of hoping for that for that tournament was that everybody kind of, you know, gets themselves paired up. But maybe that'll be in the future for that event. You never know. Yeah. But I, I think that, you know, um, a lot of people don't see all the hard work that, that USBC and BBAA does and Robin Graves, which is our tournament director, like behind the scenes. And because I'm a part of the committee, you don't see that side either. But, you know, we're trying to propel women's bowling into the future. We really are. So, see, you know. she's She said more on the show that I've heard and seen on like the internet from <laughs> those. I hate to say it, but, you know, crazy thing what here is doing to work on it. Right. Lindsay, I'll tell you this much. Nobody is a bigger proponent than Phil Brylow for the women's tour. He is always harping one way or the other. They need more exposure. They need to get them on TV more, this and that. And Phil is a huge proponent of, of getting you guys out there. And I, I think the show in general supports that too. I, I, I'm also curious about, you know, you said that it's sold out. A, a couple of shows are, are sold out or whatever mm -hmm. at this point. What is the demographic that you're seeing at these shows? I mean, is it a majority of women that are coming to these shows? Are you seeing a lot of men and, you know, their sons at these shows? Like, what is the demographic that you see? I mean, we see kids from two years old to teenagers. We see them with their families. We see friends. Uh, you know, I would say at each stop I go to, I have two to five friends that are at some point going to come. I feel like that happens for at least 30 of the PWBA bowlers. Wow. Um, you know, obviously, depending on what time it is during the year and where the location is, some are busier than others. But, I mean, you could barely move in Egan, Minnesota, when we were last there two years ago. You couldn't move in Rockford, and Rockford is having two pro-amps. So that is amazing. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's really great to see how – you know, women's bowling wasn't really on the map, but I really feel like it's being elevated to that point. And I agree with you. I mean, I think women's bowling is amazing, not just because I'm a part of it, just because there are so many talents and there's so many things that go into the sport of bowling that people really, really don't understand. And I was just lucky enough since I was five, you know, I, I grew up in that, you know, bowling family. Um, so, you know, we are really lucky. I think that if someone came to those stops, especially this year, and then next year is the 10 year anniversary of the relaunch. I mean, I think it's going to be fantastic. And Robin has some great ideas and great things planned that maybe isn't publicly known, but you know, those people that truly love women's bowling are doing everything they possibly can. And so, um, you know, maybe it's just a misconception. I don't know. I you know, I just know what I know, and I'm lucky that we have the funding and we get to go bowl for professional titles. Because really, like, you know, I've not had the easiest road on TV. Made some shows, not bowled the best. The only thing left on my bucket list was to win a professional title, and then I ended up winning Queens. Um, so, you know, I wouldn't have that opportunity after all the things that I just, you know, discussed, especially with the funding. So I, I have another one for you. Sure. I, and I brought this up about the PBA tour. 
Uh, because I feel like with the PBA tour, we kind of get into going to the same centers year after year, and we don't really ever expand one way or the other. And I've understand that most people are driving. Most people probably aren't flying uh, and so forth. So I get that aspect of it. I just wonder whether or not you couldn't do year to year, a regional type deal where, you know, in 2025, we're going to be out West in the California, Vegas, Colorado area. And that's going to, that's where we're going to be the tour. And then the next year, maybe you're down in the Southern part of the country. The next year you're on the East coast and the next year you're on the Midwest. So, you know, every four years you roll back into you know, that part of the country and you expand your footprint. I feel like they're kind of stuck in the same footprint every year on the PBA tour, which reminds me of NASCAR prior to Jeff Gordon coming along where they were kind of stuck in the South and the Midwest and the East coast and never really expanded West until Jeff Gordon came onto the tour or onto the circuit. And then once that happened, NASCAR kind of blew up a little bit more than it already was. Uh, What would be your thoughts on that? Well, this year, I mean, just for my personal experience, So this year I can't drive to one stop. So that's just because of the way that the the schedule is. I mean, we're in Minnesota, we're in Chicago, we're in Detroit, we're in Indiana, we're in, you know, Nashville, Tennessee. There's nothing really on the West this year. So that's new. So now we're going to different locations. Um, You know, we've gone to New York the last couple of years. We're not going back to New York. So I feel like, you know, We've gone to a lot of places around the the U.S. Um, I don't know how the women would feel about that because when the tour relaunched, and I don't know if people knew this, but when they when it relaunched in 2015, the schedule was made for you to have another job for a, like a secondary income sure. because when the tour folded, you know everyone had to go and get a job. I mean, obviously. So to me, like, I don't know how that schedule would work because then we also have, you know, a percentage of the women bowlers that coach collegially. And so they can't, and that's why our schedule is during the summer. So I I, I guess like taking those factors into it and now having it be so successful and having these events sold out, I wouldn't suggest, oh, you know, let's try to put a wrench in it and change something because we could lose those entries. And then the PWBA regional program is flourishing. Like that is being super successful. And so those ladies are getting, you know, to try out on a smaller professional scale to see if they want to go try the the tour full time. And that's why I'll be interested to see. And that's why I looked at the roster yesterday of how many of those ladies that I saw bowl those regionals that now are going to be bowling this year full time out on tour, because that's what we need. We need the participants. We need the dedication Um, to becoming members and to bowling full-time out on tour. So, you know, I'm lucky enough where I work remotely for H5G, but, you know, a lot of other ladies have full-time jobs where they're, you know, they're flying in Thursday morning and then they're flying home Saturday night if they don't make the show or Sunday morning and they're going back to work on Monday. So that's kind of why our schedule is the way it is. Location, um, I'm not really sure 100% about that, but this year is significantly different from my perspective because I can't even drive to one swing at all. That's crazy. Uh, okay, so uh, one last one for you, mm-hmm. and I don't know if this is accurate, so if it's not accurate, you can yell at Dwight. Uh, <laughs> Dwight says your nickname is Elvis, uh, and, and would like to know why. Your nickname is not Elvis, is it? It can't be Elvis. No. See, that's what I thought. Come on, that's Dwight. what he said, right? Um, the story behind her Elvis nickname was question number two on this yeah. list that he sent us. Elvis? Um, no. 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 Okay, good. Just making sure. Um, I didn't think that was give, right, but I figured I asked. Can we give Dwight another week off next week? Is that okay? <laughs> um, let's see. In college, I mean, it was like Al Boom. Um, I really never liked yeah. to be called Bakes because that was Uncle Tom's nickname. Right. Right. Um, they call me, usually it's Linz, yeah. LB. Um, yeah. cause once I got married, my initials didn't change. So it was still, you know, B Baker, Boomer time. So wait a second uh, here. I want I have a personal question. If you don't okay. mind, Yeah. like, did you fight to keep the name Baker when you got married? Like Boomer shot. I can't Boomer shot. I'm not going to do Boomer shot. How about it's Baker Boomer shot or something like that? I'll use Baker on TV. I mean, Boomer shot. You got to be really in love to go with that last name. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I do. I mean, he is an amazing person, but I get so many compliments on that name. Like when that's I'm awesome. Signing, when I'm signing my name and all that stuff, they're like, that's a great last name. And I'm like, sorry, I can't take credit for it. It's not really mine. <laughs> like, but no, um, you know, I think that it's his family, Hank's family was really proud of it, like on a serious note. So for me to have success, um, having the Boomershine last name, I think is a great tribute to his fam like Hank's family. But um, yeah, it is a, it, it's a very interesting name. And I feel like it kind of helps me be unforgettable. I sure. Mean, you're not right. going to forget that last name. All right. You're so, absolutely right. Yes. One thousand percent. And the other thing I liked about it is there was, you know, there's a few other bakers in the bowling industry. So now I don't think there's like any confusion, you know, like I'm not related to Mark Baker, but then like, you know, Tom's my uncle. Like, yep. Then my family in New York, like Baker was like a very strong last name. So, um, no, I'm going to go with it. I like it. Lindsay. Boomershine. And then I have like all sort of different nicknames they call me. Like, you know, it's just because then they started calling me Boomer. And I was like, please don't do that. That's Leanne Holsenberg's nickname. Right. So, yeah, no, it's been a world with, but Elvis, after all these years, is the first time I've ever. Hey, I didn't know if you had a weekend in Vegas that we didn't know about or something, you know, at a casino. I, I didn't know where it came from. I figured I'd ask. Follow her on Twitter at Lynn's Boom. Follow Phil Brylow at Bruce City Bowling. Follow me at Sparky Radio. That'll do it for another edition of the Spare Time Bowling Show. Thanks so much for tuning in. Don't forget, download it on your Odyssey app or if you download your favorite podcast at. Check us out as well on the Odyssey Sports YouTube page. Enjoy the rest of your day. 